Loose the shackles. You know, in this world, so many people shackle themselves. They don't need any help. You let the troubles of this world just pile up and you listen to them and you kind of overlook what Father has to say concerning this and you make yourself a prisoner sometimes if you're not careful in your own self and how precious it is when our Father gives us the word and the encouragement that he gives us. Open your Bibles, if you would, to Psalms 102. Psalms 102. And we begin with verse 16. And verse 16 reads, uh, When the Lord shall build up Zion, he shall appear in his glory. And you can count on that. In his glory, so it is. Uh, verse 17, he will regard the prayer of the destitute and not despise their prayer. That's the way it is. Don't ever ask, wonder if God hears my prayers. When you got problems, he's going to hear them. You can count on it. Verse 18, this shall be written for the generation to come. And the people which shall be created shall praise the Lord. That, that's forever and ever. Verse 19, For he hath looked down from the height of his sanctuary. From the heaven did the Lord behold the earth. He, he sees, he knows what's going on. You don't have to ever feel alone if you're a servant of his. He knows where you are. He knows what you're doing. And he is your guide on. He cares. He loves you when you return that love to him. To hear the groaning of the prisoner, to loose, here's our word, to loose those that are appointed to death. That, in other words, that would spiritually die if it wasn't for the word of God to give you life in every vein of your body, to keep you going, to give you encouragement, to know that he is real. And... Uh, Death is the devil, okay? You got no room for him. You don't want him around you. You have power and authority over him. You know why? You're a child of God. You don't have to put up with junk. You're far, far too good to put up with junk. Get it out of your life, okay? And uh, so it is. He looses the bounds and cuts you free to declare the name of the Lord in Zion and his praise in Jerusalem, that city of peace. When the people are gathered together in the kingdoms to serve the Lord, he weakeneth my strength in a way, he shorteneth my days. This, this goes back to uh, verse 3, when they were feeling sorry for themselves, moaning and groaning, the Lord doesn't hear us. As it, as it states there, for my days are consumed like smoke and my bones are burned as in hearth. Verse 3. You've got God with you. Don't ever get in that frame of mind. He would never weaken you. He only strengthens you. Why? He's the creator. Do you think he that created every planet in the universe and every star is handicapped to serve a little thing like you? then don't try to restrain God. He is able. He can do what he sets out to do. And you know something? It might really surprise you sometimes, but he loves you. You may not love what you do all the time, but he does love you. And anytime you want those shackles removed, talk to him. Have them cut asunder and you're free. Free as a child of God to serve. Verse 24, I said, O oh my God, take me not away in the midst of my days, thy years all, or throughout all generations. Uh, what a poor me baby. Okay? You can fall into that rut if you're not real careful. Just don't go there. You know something? As long as you're breathing, as long as you can move a finger, God has a purpose for you or you would not be here. You mean to say that again? As long as you're breathing, God has a purpose for you or you wouldn't be here. 
So don't be whimpering and whining to him. He's in charge. He can cut it. He can cut you loose, loose from the troubles and the traditions of this world and set you free where you can, I mean, motate and act like a Christian, a child of God. 25, of old hast thou laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thy hand. You want to limit him? You can't. They shall perish, but thou shalt endure. Yea, all of them shall wax old like a garment as a vesture. Shalt thou change them, and they shall be changed. And they shall, we're going to have a new rejuvenating of this world, as it is written in Revelation chapter 21. <clears throat> Everything that offends is going to be taken out of the way. I guess the question is, are, are you going to be there? That's what's important. Are you, are you going to be there? Because you see, only those that overcome in him, only those that allow him to loose the shackles of this old world, and set you free in his truth, can you make that trip? Many will. And I'm sure if you love his word and if you love him, he just promised you, I I'm looking down. I can see you. I can hear you. I know what you're thinking, and I know what your needs are. I can set you free. I can loose you. I can take the shackles off of you that man would try to place upon you. Don't you ever let it happen. I think my notes just took a big bow there. So turn to Psalms 147. Maybe I don't need it. Psalms 147, and we'll pick it up in verse 5. Verse 5 of Psalms 147. Great is our Lord, and of the great power his understanding is infinite. It, it's beyond all telling. You, can't, you cannot ex understand how all-knowing and how wonderful he is. Uh, the, the Lord lifteth up the meek. He casteth the wicked down to the ground. And he does. Okay. And I'm sorry, I'm, I'm in 147. I mean 146. Did I say 146? Okay. You needed that anyway. It's good for you. 146 verse 5. Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God. That's, that's where you want to place it. You can't go wrong there, beloved. Which made heaven and earth, the sea and all that therein is, which keepeth truth forever. He's not going to steer you wrong. You can trust him. You know, man may lead you down Primrose Lane. Why? Man's weak. But God won't. You can trust him. He will lead you. He will guide you. And he did. He created all things. Verse 7, Which executeth judgment for the oppressed, which giveth food to the hungry, the Lord looseth the prisoners. He cuts loose those shackles. He looses them. You know, don't, don't let yourself get caught. We're coming into some perilous times. If you think it's rough now, stick around. It's going to get rougher for those that don't believe. You've got to be ready to trust on he who is able. And that's Almighty God. He can cut you free from it. He can loosen you. When you become a prisoner of these uh, traditions of men and anxieties that haunt this world, he can set you free. Why? He created this earth and everything that's in it. He knows how it operates. He knows what it takes. He created these flesh bodies. He even knows what they need. And so it is. He loose, looseth the prisoners. He gives you that freedom. That's a promise of his. Claim it. 
Don't get caught up in the things of this world that make anxious many people. You don't have to be. You rise above that because you're a child of God. Well, brother, are you telling me I'll never have any more trouble? I'm telling you, you won't ever have any more trouble that you can't cut, okay? Because you're a child of God. If trouble comes your way, you can stomp on it, go around it, through it, or over it. Because he's with you. It doesn't mean you're going to live in a rose garden. But it means you're a man, a woman, or a child of God. Look out for them. They're coming. They're strengthening. He's loosing the prisoners. The time is right. He's building. He's regenerating. And how wonderful it is. Our Father loves his children. The Lord openeth the eyes of the blind. Those that can't even see the truth. The Lord raiseth them that are bowed down. The Lord loveth the righteous. He loves those that do what is right. That's what righteousness is. At least that try to do what's right. We're always going to fall short a little bit probably. That's mankind. But as long as you keep trying and working and serving him, he's going to pick you up. You're going to accomplish something. You're going to show leadership. You're going to be blessed from above by Almighty God. Why? He helps. He knows when you need help. He knows when you need guidance. He knows when you need a prayer answered. If you're righteous, if you try, he will hear you. He will always hear you, but he will answer you in that righteousness. Verse 9, the Lord preserveth the strangers. He relieveth the fatherless and the widow, but the way of the wicked he turneth upside down. You don't want to go there. This world is about to be turned upside down by him. It's already upside down. They have made wrong seem right and right seem wrong through political correctness and many other things. He's going to give them a little flip. And they're going to get a flip a deluxe in the near future. That's why you, as a child of God, you want to serve him. You want to be with him. Why? Again, he loves you. He created you different than anyone else. Your DNA is different. Your fingerprints are different. You're unique. Why? He wanted someone like you. But he wants you to love him, and he wants you to do what's right. And when you do that, his blessings do follow. One more verse, 10. The reason that's the last verse is the last one in this chapter. Words of wisdom. Okay. The Lord shall reign forever, even thy God, O Zion. Unto all generations praise ye the Lord. All generations. Well, could that possibly be us today? I would hope you would know that all generations are inclusive. It means exactly that. Yes, it means today. Yes, he hears you today. Yes, he loosens you today from the shackles that man would try to place upon you. He sets you free and free indeed. Well, what is it that makes me free? Truth. Truth. As it is written in St. John chapter 8, verse 32, Learn the truth, it shall set you free, for the truth is God. The truth is our Father. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. Please Him. He will always please you, ultimately. You may not understand some of it at the time being. You may say, well, life is just not doing me right. Cut it. Handle it. Show them. You're a child of God. Act like it. You're not a wimp. You're a man, woman, or a child that God has chosen. And he knows he can count on them. He has cut you free. Loose the shackles. And you're free indeed. Isaiah chapter 58.
Isaiah chapter 58. Verse 1. Cry aloud and spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgressions in the house of Jacob their sins. That's doing what's right, okay? When you teach God's word, you're automatically doing that. Do you understand? Yet they seek me daily in delight to know my ways. They like to play church as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. Their um, religion, unfortunately, is most often self-serving. They, they don't like to go into debt. They don't, I think I would rather say they do, not, they do not want to go into the simplicity in which Christ teaches, in which the Word teaches, that strengthens you. Verse 3, Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? You're, you're not paying any attention to us, God. Behold, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure and exact all your labors. Um, in other words, um, things wherewith you grieve others. That's what you find when you fast. You, like, look at me. I'm one of the greatest Christians in the block. I suffer for God. You, you, don't, you, don't, you don't suffer for God. That's, that's an insult to him. You live for God. You don't play church and look sad. Okay. Well, things happen. Handle it. Take care of them. Stand up and act like a man or a woman or a child of God. Loose the shackles. Stand up. Stand for something or you stand for nothing. Don't play church. Verse 4. Behold, you fast for strife and debate and to smite with the fist of wickedness. Uh, you shall not fast as you do this day to make your voice to be heard on high. In other words, I won't listen. That's what he's saying. You can fast, fast and play church and poor me, baby, all you want to. I'm not going to pay any attention to you. And I know somebody that's a wimp or goes, oh, God, I haven't got a chance then. Don't be a wimp, and you'll have every chance in the world that anyone else does. But it's rough. Yeah, and you can cut it. You can handle it. Why? He has loosed you if you're righteous. Verse 5. Is it such a fast that I have chosen? Do you think God sent that? A day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush? and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him, wilt thou call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? If um, you can weep all you want to. I didn't say it that way. When you fast for God, nobody even knows it. No one could tell it. Don't fast for the word of God. Fast for the things that are of man. Do away with them. Keep them out of your life and feed on the word of God. As it is written in Amos chapter 8, verse 11, the famine in the end times is not for bread, but it's for hearing the true word of God. So don't, don't you ever let yourself be robbed of that. Uh, six, this is why we came here. Is not this the fast that I have chosen? To loose the bands of wickedness? Cut loose the shackles. Loose them. To undo the heavy burdens. And to let the oppressed go free. And that you break every yoke. Do not let man shackle you. That's, you know, that's not God's plan. Well, I just want to be somebody's whipping boy. Well, then probably Satan's, okay? 
I mean, you cut it. You stand up and you act like a child of God and you'll be received as a child of God. God will look down upon you and see, observe, and bless. Don't do it for yourself. Do it for him. Let him use you. Be a vessel that can touch others, that can raise up, not tear down. That's what serving God is. Is helping people up, not down. Break every yoke that man would try to place upon you. Verse 7. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou being, bring the poor that are cast out to thy house? What are you going to feed them, beloved? Well, a biscuit? I hope you're smarter than that. Feed them the word of God. That's what they're starving for. That's why this ministry is such a success. That's why this ministry doesn't have to beg to be a ministry. It feeds the word of God. It feeds the hungry that need the truth from this word. And God returns that tenfold in blessings. Uh, when thou seest the naked, that thou cover him and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. What kind of person are you? What are you wearing? Gospel armor. Keep it on. Put it on others. He's talking spiritual here. You, you arm them and forearm them whereby they can stand against the fiery darts of Satan, and only the gospel armor can accomplish that. Ephesians chapter 6. Read it for yourself. Put it on and you can stand against the fiery darts of Satan. Every one of them. Why? You're a child of God. You're one that is righteous and he hears you. You're one that he unshackles, he is loosed. And you are free to serve him. And, and so it is. Uh, Verse 8, they shall, then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy rearward. That's your rear guard. He's got your back. You don't have to worry about it. How precious our Father is that he loves those that serve him. Verse 9, then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and the speaking vanity, if you take his truth and replace all the garbage that man would try to place upon you in traditions, God will say, Here I am. What can I do for you? Do you know he says in Isaiah, this same book, Isaiah 43, verse 26, tell me, remind me of the promises I've made. See, that's a promise. He says, remind me of it. Let's talk about it. He didn't forget. He wants to know if you've read it. He wants to know if you are righteous. He wants to know if you're what you say you are. Then he says in that 26 verse of Isaiah 50, 43, Let's talk about it so I can justify you. That means make it right with you. Make it just. Make it palatable. Cutting loose the burdens of this world. For, and, and I, again, I want to emphasize. Many men, you mean we're going to have a bed of roses? No, he didn't say that at all. But he gives you the power and the strength to take care of whoever comes your way. And as a warrior of God, you should be happy to participate. Okay. Why? You can cut it. You can handle it. Knowing he's going to give you the power and the authority to do it. No question asked. Verse 10. And if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry, hungry for truth, and satisfy the afflicted soul, give them that truth. Then shall thy light rise in obscurity, and thy darkness be as the noonday. You'll never be in the dark because you're a child of light. Christ is that light, and he shines through you. That it illuminates 
the truth whereby the hungry can be fed. Verse 11, and the Lord shall guide thee continually. And what, what was that again? The Lord will guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought. When everybody else is in a drought for truth, he'll take care of you. He'll give you that truth. He'll give you that word of wisdom. And make fat thy bones, and, thy sh and thou shalt be like a watered garden, and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. I don't know, are you loosed or do you get yourself all tangled up in the ways of this world mentally in your little head, big head? Maybe it says it sounds better little head, okay? Because none of you have a big head, right? Okay, so, so it is. God loves his children. He delights in you. What does he want from you? He wants your love. That gives him pleasure. And certainly when you let him know you love him, that's a good start. But to know that he has released you from the shackles of this world, from anything that he knows you can handle what's coming down the pike. He trusts you that much. I could say he knows what happened in the first earth age. He knows you can cut it. I won't say any more. Twelve to complete. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations. And thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. We're in that generation, beloved, when that false one is coming. And the repair work has already begun. It's growing magnificently, not with man, but with God with God's help, that repairing is starting. The old is being built. And how precious it is that you are a part of that, that you're a child of the living God. And he has chosen his election to cut loose the bounds, if you'll just hear, and not be indebted, tied to, or, or obligated other than to stand good for what you're good for. And God will take care of the rest. You handle what you can, and what you can't, he'll take care of. I know that to be a fact. I know it's true. And God, how he does love his children. And, and so it is. Um, our Father is so very good to us. And he, how well he loves his children. And, uh, and so it is. Um, th then shall your light break forth. We got that. But um, skip on, if you would, to verse 12, where that was the repair of the breach. We got that. So guess what we're going to do? We're going to go to the book of Daniel. We're going to go to Daniel chapter 3. What, what's happening there? Um, Nebuchadnezzar made it of an image. It's 606, which is symbolic of 666. And he told the three Hebrew children, you're going to worship that. And this is an example of you today, whereby you can handle what comes at you if you believe, if you are righteous. Because these three... As they were, they they loved the Lord. They truly did. They wouldn't worship the thing. It is the equivalent of the false Messiah coming, and you're told to worship him. You're not going to. Okay. Now, to give you a truth that God wants you to know, if you love him, they can't harm a hair on your head. So many people fear the end times. You know, well, I wonder what's going to happen to me. Well, how about what's going to happen to the people that are ignorant? That's something to worry about. That's something to be concerned about. You're going to be just fine. Why? God's not angry at you. The cup of wrath is poured out on those that don't serve God. They're the ones that have to worry. But here, these three, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the three Hebrew children, they would not worship anyone other than God. 
following that commandment, the first commandment. Well, let's go to verse 25. We'll make this short and sweet. Verse 3 and... Um, Let's see, let's, let's don't go there. Let's go with 22. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceeded exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire, this is 22, slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I mean, it was so hot they died taking them there. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the fiery furnace this is what you do. I want to take this spiritual for a minute so that you see the deeper truth, okay? Don't get bound up in the ways of the world and be thrown into anything, okay? Don't get bound up. And even if man forces you to be bound up, guess what happens when you're righteous? This, we're, we're going all the way to the end. That's what this is an example of. Verse 24, then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished, he was astonished. And he rose up in haste and he spake and he said unto his counselors, did not we cast three men bound, underline bound, into the midst of the fire? They entered and said unto the king, true, O king, you got it right. Verse 25, he answered and said, lo, I see four men loose. Loose from what? Loose from the shackles of this world. Loose from worshiping false messiahs. Loose from worshiping that that uh, you would not. Walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. He was there with them, you understand. He'll always come through for you. If you have the faith and the trust to know that, I mean, there he was right in that fiery furnace. A, a, a further study, if you ever want to make it, is in, in the Apocrypha. You, you have the, um, the uh, song of the three children. They were singing a song while they were in there. It's, in, it's interesting. But we're not going there. And, and uh, he could see them. And how, how did he know what the Son of God looked like? Okay. Or, Verse 26, then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you servants of the most high God, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth in the midst of the fire. <clears throat> they were delivered. Don't ever let your doubts sway you. You know something? Faith is a beautiful, wonderful thing. I don't want you to ever let your faith weaken, especially in this generation. It's ever, ever so important, and it's going to grow more important, for perilous times are coming, not for us, but for the world, because you, as a child of God, are like these three children, it can't bother you. Why? He walks with you. That's why he said, when you're righteous and you ask, I will say, I am here. And he will be when you need him, when you have the faith to plug into that and to understand. Now, in completion, let's go to the New Testament. Let's go to the book of Mark, which we've been teaching. Let's go to chapter 10. St. Mark, chapter 10. <clears throat> kind of asking who serves who, and Christ was answering it. Chapter 10, the book of Mark, verse 42. But Jesus called them to him, and he said unto them, You know that they which are accounted to rule over the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and their 
great ones exercise authority upon them. They, 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 I mean, they practice that authority. But so shall it not be among you. It's not going to be that way. But whosoever will be great among you shall be your minister. Would I have to ask you a question if I would say who was the greatest of all? Would I have to ask that without knowing what you're going to say, the Lord Jesus Christ and our Father? I know you're going to say that. Okay. They are the greatest of all. No question. No quarter. Verse 44. And whosoever of you will be the chiefest shall be servant of all. You're going to, you're going to serve. 45, this is why we came here. Listen carefully. For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. This word, this word ransom in the Greek tongue is lutron. Lutron. You know what lutron means? It means to loosen. He came to this earth to die on the cross to loosen you when you believe. That's what a ransom is. Well, I have been pretty bad. He paid a price big enough to pay for it. When you truly repent. I, I, I get a kick out of some people sometimes. It's not, it's not good to have been a big sinner, and that certainly is no excuse to be a preacher. I've heard a lot of so-called would-be preachers say, I, I, I was an alcoholic, which is fine. That's no problem. I was a bank robber. I stole money, and that's why I'm a preacher. That's not good qualifications. That just doesn't really ring real true. He was perfect. And he paid that price on the cross, Lutheran, to set you free. I mean, to loose you. To loose any shackle that you might want to place upon yourself even by allowing someone to whisper in your ear. Okay. You're free when you're righteous, when you love him, when you serve him. That was his purpose in coming. That shows his love for you. That shows his love for every one of us. That he did it to loose us. Lutron, loose us from the shackles of this world and the traditions of men that make void the very purpose of God. How precious it is to be able to serve him. Heavenly Father, thank you, Father, for the price that was paid that brings this freedom, this loosing, Father, loosing the shackles of man from the hearts, minds, and souls of God's elect in these precious times, the end times, this generation, the generation of the fig tree. Be with us, we ask it. We know you are. In Jesus' precious name, amen. The Mark of the Beast on CD is our free introductory offer to you. What is the Mark of the Beast? Many false teachers would have you believe it will be a tattoo on your forehead or a computer chip implanted under your skin. It is getting late in the game. You need to know what the Mark of the Beast is. As it's written in Revelation chapter 13 verse 8, many will be deceived. There is no need for you to be deceived. Christ said in Mark 13, 23, Behold, I have foretold you all things. Jesus indeed told us how not to be deceived, and Pastor Arnold Murray takes you on a step-by-step -step study of God's Word concerning this critical subject, the mark of the beast. The telephone call is free. The CD is free. We don't even ask for the shipping and handling. It is free as well. All you need to do is call 800-643-4645 to request your one-time, one-per-household copy of the mark of the beast. You may also request your free CD by mailing your request to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Don't be deceived by Satan. And you love them because they are yours, and especially when they deserve it. But uh, to idolize something means to worship it instead of God. You do not worship your children instead of the living God. You state it yourself in your closing remark, I love our Heavenly Father. Okay? That's who you worship. 
And your children would never be an idol to you. And I'm sure they love you. You sound like a very loving mother. Uh, Suzanne from Tennessee. My son has been in and out of jail and will attend prison four years. I've tried to share the word to him in letters. I wasn't preaching. I don't think I have mentioned some passages, but especially to tell him our letters of how much he is loved by God, how to control fleshly wants. Anyway, for years, my son has lied to me and to his father, and we have thought we were helping him with money for years, our great mistake. So do I go on as if he is fine? No, no, you don't. You're an enabler when you do that. An enabler does not show love for your child. I want you to make a note. This is very important to you. Second Thessalonians chapter 3. Begin reading with verse 6. Sometimes you have to cut your own kin off. Don't treat them as an enemy, but set yourself aside from them. And admonish them. Do not help them. It says even in verse 10 of that chapter, if a person won't eat, don't feed them. You're making a bad mistake if somebody will not work and you always feed them. You see, when there is a little micro switch between the navel and the backbone, and when you get hungry enough for those two to come together, the little word work comes out of your mouth and you get out and get to it, okay? That's the way it goes. Uh, Joanne from, I want to repeat that scripture again. You need it real badly. Second, Thess Second Thessalonians chapter 3, begin reading with verse 6. Joanne from Washington. Thank you for your in-depth teaching and not talking down to us. As a former teacher of romantic languages, I am very interested in words, roots of words and idioms. When you give us Hebrew or Greek words, would it be possible for you to give them the spelling? I would like to put the notes in my Bible. This is why that I recommend a Strong's Concordance from our library, because every word I use is biblical, and it will give you in the Strong's Concordance the accurate spelling of the word, whether it's Greek, Hebrew, or Aramaic. Okay, and uh, so it is. Television time is very valuable, and we try to fit as much teaching as we can and furnish uh, tools where you're able to do some work yourself. Butch from Oklahoma. If murder is not the unpardonable, unforgivable sin, can a person be forgiven? Well, you have to take that up with the Father. Only Father can forgive you. And he says, th this is now not, you see, we're getting a point of law here. A lot of people call a, a killing of passion murder. It's not. Okay. It's a killing of passion. Usually the person that is the victim of a killing of passion had it coming to them. Okay. So uh, that's not murder. Murder is where somebody lies in wait and wickedly, for no reason, takes a life. Then there is no forgiveness for them in the flesh. Father says, send them up here to me. I'll give them a trial. Because you see, the person they murdered is up there waiting too. And they'll be at the trial. And it'll all be worked out. Maybe God will forgive you. Maybe he won't. It's up to him. He's the judge. Gloria from California. Pastor Murray, would you please explain Mamzar? Is, you have mentioned this word, but I've never explained what it is. I can't find it in Smith's Bible Dictionary, and I am so frustrated, so please tell us what it is. Thanks. I feel like everyone but me knows it. Well, you take the word bastard from uh, Deuteronomy and, uh, and check it out in your Hebrew and you'll find out what it means, okay? That's Menzar. Uh, Todd from Texas. 
if I was to set aside MREs, meals ready to eat, for the end times, what are your thoughts on this? It's fine. You know, you should always have a cupboard with um, sufficient food to last a short time. You could always have truck strikes and uh, God only knows what else in these end times that could stop deliveries. So it doesn't hurt to have a back supply. Would you please advise me and all the other students of how many we will need for a ratio of three meals per day per person? Well, the entire period is a five-month period, so you do the homework. You won't need it for that many. Most of you will be delivered up sometime in that five-month period. He will feed you and try to make all over you to get you to believe upon him. Um, and, and so it is, because he comes in prosperously and peacefully, not the great warrior that many people picture him as. Jimmy and Caroline from Detroit, from Delaware, I'm sorry. My mother died July the 23rd at assisted living when she, where she lived. I wonder when she died, if she knew she left us here on earth and misses us. Of course she does. You know, it is written in, in Ezekiel chapter 20, uh, 44, verse uh, 25, that you will know your relatives in the spiritual body and um, that you can help them. So, of course, she knows and remembers and loves. That's, that's, that's a mother, okay? Mothers cannot help that. That's the way they are. Uh, Dennis from Louisiana. I have faith, but I don't understand works. What is work for me, a boat mechanic, and I don't talk to many people. I do try to tell what I know. Well, all you have to do is plant a seed. Your, your job is a boat mechanic, but the main thing you want to remember, boat mechanics, when they have faith in God and are delivered up before the Antichrist, they know how to, they, they'll know how to talk to him. You're not to premeditate what you'll say. You'll do a fantastic job of, of witnessing, okay? Uh, John from Ohio, bosom of Abraham. What did it mean when spoken uh, of in the Bible? Well, it, it meant that you were present with Abraham and you were abreast of him in this gathering, uh, which means you were abreast of his bosom, meaning there was a closeness there. You were with him. And that's, that's um, I think, uh, one place that it is used is uh, Luke chapter 16 concerning the parable of Lazarus and the, the rich man, that uh, the rich man could look across the gulf because he didn't make it, and he could see Lazarus in the bosom of Abraham, meaning talking with him abreast of him. Uh, Pam, if you... If you will think of the drawing of the Last Supper, that which is what which it is called, it wasn't the Passover meal, but it was the evening before. They were all sitting in one straight line at a table, abreast of each other. Got it? Pam from Minnesota. My mom had my dad unplugged from life support. I am just wondering if we killed him. Of course not. If God wanted, if he was supposed to make it, he didn't need life support to do it. Okay. This is why that when somebody requests that these things not be used, that if God wants me to make it, he'll let me make it. Then uh, you don't have to worry about that. Don't spend one moment worrying about that. I'm sure your father is quite happy where he is and don't put your guilt on your mother especially. She did, when you love someone enough to let them go, that means you, you know they're hurting and suffering and you love them enough to let them go to the Father. That, that's a special kind of love. And your mother had that apparently. Linda from Mississippi. Will God hold against me if I stay away from my daughter and only speak to her because she treats me really bad. Will God hold that against me? I'm going to do with you, like I did earlier with the, uh, the mother of a son, read Second Thessalonians chapter 3, 
start reading with verse 6. And as your daughter fits that, then so be it. God does not expect us to tolerate hardship from our own, especially they're supposed to be a pleasure to you. And when they're not, there's something wrong, and it needs a little adjusting to the attitude that uh, 2 Thessalonians 3, beginning with 6, that it'll get it done. Tom from Florida. How is it that Kenites are descendants of Satan when everyone except Noah and his wife and family were destroyed in the flood? Have you, have you ever read the sixth chapter of Genesis? Who did God tell Noah to take two of every kind above the, uh, on the ark? What did he tell him? He said, take two of every flesh aboard the ark. That's of every race, every kindred, as well as animals. Because man was flesh also. Read Gen Genesis 6, verse 3. God had created man flesh. Take two of them aboard the ark. Noah and his family were the only Adamites on the ark. That's why it says there's only eight Adamites on there. But there were other people that survived that flood. I mean, look around you. We've got them here today. Michelle from Ohio. Where can I find in the Bible that Satan comes first? I am 14 years old, and I have talked to my friends about this. Well, that's great that you do. Uh, you can find it in Mark chapter 13 that we just finished teaching. And that uh, chapter, uh, 2 Thessalonians, I've been telling you about that second chapter of 2 Thessalonians. Paul makes it so clear. He said, don't let anybody deceive you about our gathering back to the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not going to happen until the son of perdition stands in Jerusalem claiming to be God, claiming to be Jesus. That'll give you all the proof you need, okay? Uh, Ray from Canada. Will the moon and stars still exist in eternity? Actually, all the planets, all the stars, Father created them, he loves them. And the great book of Job, you can tell that he takes, he takes joy from his creation in that, uh, thir I should say, 38th chapter of the great book of Job. He goes into detail about his creation and how great it was. Faye from Florida, are we supposed to say the Pledge of Allegiance? I was told that it was in the Bible that we are not, but I cannot find it. Thank you. You know why you can't find it? It's not there. We are to always carry that standard. Ultimately, our standard is the Lord Jesus Christ. But our nation, under God, guarantees our right as free citizens to have the right to teach God's word, to broadcast with license, legal, around the world. And uh, so why would you not want to say allegiance to a nation that guarantees this freedom? You know, Faye, a lot of people have not traveled much. I've traveled a great deal in even war times like World War II, the Korean conflict and others, and saw how some people are really, I've witnessed how some people are treated in wartime. It's not a pretty sight then you can really appreciate this nation. And when you see people that will try to do away with the pledge, it hurts. It rends your soul. When, especially when you've shed blood for the freedom of this nation. And you get some yehu that's so politically correct he doesn't want to offend anyone. To heck with that. I don't care whether it offends somebody or not, I'm going to pledge allegiance to the flag. I'm going to teach God's word, and no one is going to stop that, not in this free nation. That's why that pledge should always be honored. Be aware of men's doctrines when they can't prove it scripturally. It's a lie. Honesty is a precious commodity. Thank God. God, that he will send forth somebody that is honest very soon.
that um, even politically, that the people will be blessed by. Margaret from Virginia, should I continue to invite others into my home that are of a different faith to try to change their minds, or is that going against God? No, it isn't, if you feel led to. Uh, you know, God leads his elect, and um, I never question where someone is or what they're doing, if they're trying to impress upon people the truth, praise God. That's good. It means you're a strong enough person that you know how to protect your home against anything false, and Satan runs from you anyway. So therefore, you don't have anything to fear other than fear itself, and a good Christian doesn't have room for that. Um, LT from California, can you explain the duration of the time of the locust? We, we were taught that it was May through September. Would you please give your opinion on this subject? Well, that's when the locusts that appear for a five-month period, it is from May through September. That is that segment of even a 17-year locust life. It is a five-month period. I'm out of time. Hey. I love you all because you enjoy studying our Father's Word, chapter by chapter, verse by verse. Most of all, God loves you for it. It makes His day. And when you make His day, boy, is He going to make yours. You're going you're to be pleased by it. We're brought to you by your tithes and offerings. If we have helped you, you help us keep coming to you. Bless God. He will always bless you. Most important, though, you listen to me, listen good. You stay in his word every day. In his word is a good day, even with trouble. You know why? Because Jesus, Yeshua, he is the living word. Hearing God's word with understanding will change your life. We hope you have enjoyed studying God's word here on the Shepherd's Chapel Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. If you would like to receive more information concerning Shepherd's Chapel, you may request our free introductory offer. Our introductory offer contains the Mark of the Beast audio tape, our monthly newsletter with a written Bible study, a tape catalog, and a list of written reference works available through Shepherd's Chapel. To request our free introductory offer by telephone, call 800-643-4645, 24 hours a day. You may also request our introductory offer by writing to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Once again, that's Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. We invite you to join us for the next in-depth Bible study each weekday at this same time. Thank you for watching today's program, and God bless you.